Hello and welcome, I'm Arumba. Thank you for joining me. This is Arumba's Agenda on 9-10, or it will be on 9-10 when you see this video, for the week of September 9-10 through 9-17. And so, um, yeah, this video is actually going to replace the, the normal Sims slot because I had a, uh, I had a procedure done today and so I'm not feeling up to recording much and, uh, we're just gonna have, we're just gonna take an easy night. So I wanted to just take a moment to talk about what's planned and then also get some feedback from you to see what type of videos you'd like to see more of or perhaps less of on the channel. Lately, I've been branching into more and more different types of games and different types of categories of games. And I think long term for a channel to survive on YouTube, it needs to have structure and enough diversity to not stagnate. But most importantly, structure. I think that if you just upload videos willy-nilly and you do 20 of them of a certain video in a row, then it just you just disenfranchise lots of people to your channel and then they never come back. And so I want to maintain good structure, but at the same time, I also want to make sure that I'm playing the right games that at least have some interest for a, a good percentage of the audience. And um, you know, ultimately, I play games because it's fun and. Um, I, I, I just I have to enjoy myself. That's part of like my rules for myself. But also, at this point, um, I've I've been doing this for a living now for um, really the last almost whole year, about 10, 10 or eleven months now. And so, from a business standpoint, it's also very important that I continue to care and and really check upon the audience and the you know the subscribers of the channel and make sure that you're getting what you're looking for out of the channel as well. Because at the end of the day. I've said this many times, but at the end of the day, if you're not watching videos, then I'm doing something wrong because um, there's no point in me uploading videos that people don't want to watch, right? I mean, it doesn't benefit anybody to upload a video that no one's interested in or a very, very small portion of people are interested in. And, and so anyway, um, so you'll notice that today, uh, Tuesday, we had the first video of a Battlestar Galactica board game, which was something Quill Quillateen invited me into a couple weeks or two or three weeks ago, and I said yes, just because I thought it'd be a lot of fun, and um, I had a blast. I really enjoyed it, and I, I thought games like that, I just, I don't know, you don't see that very often, and if people are interested in it, then I, I'll probably play that more. I think that was a lot of fun. I enjoyed that game, and the, the really cool thing about Vassal is that there are like just tons and tons of games available. I don't remember, uh, no, there's no link to it here, but there's like just tons and tons of board games that can be played using Vassal. Uh, we'll get to that straw poll in just a moment. So anyway, um, the only, my, my only real complaint was just the, the, the videos were much longer than I'm used to. It took like six hours to record this session and it really, um, I don't know. It's not, I know that there's going to be a large percentage, a large percentage of people who say, "Oh yeah, um, 30 minute videos, that's the way to go." But I've got, I don't even know how many videos now, like four and a half thousand videos that are 15 to 20 minutes. And that's just my sweet spot. That's where I'm the most comfortable. And um, I don't know. I, I wish we had probably broken it up a little bit smaller. But when you're dealing with a group of people, you've kind of got to, you got to be able to adapt and be moldable to the situation. So anyway, those videos are a lot longer. But, I don't know, my, my, my opinion is that you, here's the reasoning behind 15 to 20 minute videos. And I've said this before, but we'll talk about it again now, just in case you haven't heard it. Most television programs are 30 minutes long, but the actual content is on average about 22 minutes. Maybe 21, and actually I think it's been trending downward even closer to 20 as they've continued to saturate TV with more and more commercials. Most hour-long programs are about 41 to 43 minutes long. And so my point is just that generally when I think of a program, when I think of a, a show or something that I want to watch, which is, is kind of what I'm creating. I'm creating content that's a, you know, it's a little segmented block of content. And to me, 15 to 20 minutes makes a whole lot more sense when it's pure content with no commercials. Now, don't get me wrong. I know that there are ads and YouTube is mostly to blame for that, but I permit it. So I am to blame as well. But they are at the beginning and at the end of a video. And there, it's just 15 to 20 minutes of uninterrupted content. There will never be a mid-roll. At least at this point, in my mind, I have no intentions of enabling mid-rolls at any point on the channel. And so, 15 to 20 minutes of uninterrupted content. And then, you take a break. 
I take a break, I go get a soda, or I take a sip of soda, or I go to the bathroom, or I just stand up and walk around. You remember, I sit in a chair all day, so I have to get up and walk around and do stuff. And, um, so I take a break, you take a break, everyone takes a break, and then part of the business is that, yes, there is a one, there's a commercial <laughs> interjected, that's how I get paid. And so, you know, that's how it has to happen. But, um... The majority of my argument for making the content that specific duration is actually tied to the fact that I think most people are not used to sitting for 15 to 20 minutes long of straight shot content. We're used to commercials every five minutes or we're used to or to whatever. Now, of course, there is the argument that people sit down and they watch movies and those are you know, two hours long. But here's the thing, when you're mentally prepared to watch a movie, you're sitting down to watch a movie. You're expecting a two hour long movie or two and a half hour long movie. But generally, I just think most people's attention spans, especially with cell phones and um, you know androids and iPhones and all that stuff, most people's attention spans are just garbage. We've got like 30 seconds of good attention. And then after that, it's gone. So I feel like, maybe I'm wrong on this, but I feel like the best way to, to captivate an audience, to enrapture them, you know, to make them happy, is to to keep them entertained for a reasonable period of time. And so there's anyway, I'm gonna, we're done with that. But that's that's part of the big part of the rationale. A secondary part, and I, I, I don't feel bad mentioning it, is that the fact of the matter is that if two videos are uh, say 15, well, 15, just say 20. Let's say we have two videos that are 20 minutes long and one video that's 40 minutes long. The fact of the matter is that I get two views for the two video situation and I get one view for the 40 minute situation. And so, when you get paid on views, yes, you're motivated to maximize views. Shocking, isn't it? So, anyway, it's kind of a side topic. Not really what I intended to talk about in this video, but there's nothing wrong with the discussion. So, um, I've always felt that it's best to be transparent and honest about the business. And I, that's the way I did the insurance industry, and that's the way I plan on doing the YouTube industry. And I don't think there's any reason to not talk to you about it. And if you're not interested in it, then that's fine. But chances are, if you're watching in a Roomba's Agenda video, then you're a little bit more attentive, a little bit more interested than the average person. I'd say roughly 10% of the audience right now actually watches the Agenda series. So you are the elite 10% that actually care about this kind of stuff, and so that's why I'm talking to you about it. So anyway, moving on. That was a big side topic, isn't it? I love the CK2 Pirates campaign. That's why we're doing three a day of that. I think it's awesome. I love playing CK2 again. I love Norse raiding mechanics, and basically we get to use Norse raiding mechanics in the Game of Thrones universe. It's awesome. Fredegar's an awesome character. I like raiding. I like uh, rapine, which is not the same thing as you think it is. And I like to um, I like to have Fredegar impregnate all of the women in his court. I think it's hilarious. So we're going to continue playing that like crazy until people are no longer interested or until I've conquered the map or we've achieved our goals. I think the EU4 extended campaign has been fantastic. If you haven't been watching it, you really should be watching. Like the last five videos have been really, really cool. Uh, 24 through 28, Roman Empire, huge conflict. I'm not going to spoil how it ends, but uh, you'll, I think you'll enjoy how it goes. <laughs> it's it's fun. Um, the Dwarf Fortress campaign. This is a this is a topic that I do want to cover. The Dwarf Fortress campaign. Um, I've already forgotten what the damn thing was called. What was that fortress called? Korshlorbum. Yes, Korshlorbum is dead. Unfortunately, Korshlorbum died, um, and it's because I hadn't played Dwarf Fortress in like a year, and I, I accidentally strip-searched the, uh, the captives improperly, and, and then when we went to train with one of them, they had all of their armor, and they just beat the crap out of Fredegret, and then slaughtered the entire fortress. It was miserable. But, I've been playing a solo campaign, because um, I recorded like five Dwarf Fortress videos in a row, and then I had nothing, you know, I was playing Dwarf Fortress on my own. And I recorded a solo game, and I'm probably like six, seven hours into this thing, and I've got like 70 dwarves. We've got magma, everything's going really well. And so my thought is maybe I should just start a new Dwarf Fortress series for YouTube, but not start from the beginning. Start from the middle, or start from like the, the late game Dwarf Fortress stage, and see if people are interested in how that all works. Because we've got magma, we've got like 1,300 units of tetrahedrite that we can turn into copper and silver, and like we make lots of armor. I can trade for iron, or I can dig deeper, find some hematite or something. Like, we can we can make almost anything at this point. It's really looking pretty solid. I like Dwarf Fortress, but the fact of the matter is that not too many people are really watching a lot of Dwarf Fortress. So, you know, Dwarf Fortress is always going to be a niche market, but I do enjoy it. So, anyway, I just 
I don't know. We'll see. Maybe I'll just keep playing it for Twitch. Today I streamed it for about four hours. It's a lot of fun. I enjoy it, but we'll see. What else we have going? Um, the Sims? Now this one was out of left field. I know a lot of people were very shocked to find it on the channel, but it, I think it's a fun game. The only my, my main complaint with The Sims actually is that you can't have music. It just feels so weird. It feels so quiet. It's like, um, you know, I wish more, more companies wouldn't do it that way. Like, you know, um, who was the other one? Civilization, Firaxis Entertainment. They do the same thing. They've got all this music that they license um, to use commercially in their product, but then it, because they don't own the music themselves, you can't get permission from the game developer to use the audio on YouTube because the developer has permission to use it for commercial purposes, but they don't have the right to pass on those rights to YouTubers. So, for that reason, Civilization games, and this is coming up soon, Civilization Beyond Earth, I'm sure, will have the same problem. And then also Sims 4, you can't use the in-game music. Same thing with Tropico, in fact. And it's just, I don't, I don't like it when developers do that. I prefer, like, what we're listening to right now, Crusader Kings 2 music. I love how Paradox pays Andreas Waldoft, Waldotoft to compose all of this gorgeous, awesome music for their titles. And they own the music. So when Paradox says, hey, you can use your music as long as you, you know, don't make a profit directly from it. You're not, like, selling the music. Um, and I've, t I've asked them personally before, like, they have no issue whatsoever with me playing Paradox soundtracks in the back of my videos. Because I've got, like, 90% of my content is Paradox videos. So we're getting along pretty well together. Um, but anyway. I digress. So, yes. So The Sims 4. I enjoy it, though. I think it's a fun game. It's, um, it's just different. It's just, I was just trying it out. I wanted to see how it went. See if people were interested in it. RimWorld, I think, is um, it's still an alpha, so it's not really complete, but I do feel like RimWorld has had better reception than Dwarf Fortress. RimWorld's kind of like a combination of Banished and Dwarf Fortress. You know, it's more Dwarf Fortress-esque than Banished is, but it's still similar to, like, Banished. You know what I mean? It's like, it's, 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 it's fine. Anyway, um, so that's kind of where things are at. This is my current intended schedule for the week, but I may change it. I've, I've been trying to gear myself up to be able to go to 12 videos a day, but I haven't had a chance to really do that yet. And um, we had just gotten back. Um, wow, it's already been a month, but I have not been able to do it. So maybe soon we'll try it. Tomorrow is Wednesday, the 10th, and is the first day in the last like five weeks that I have been able to schedule with Northern Lion, Quill18, and Mathis to record our multiplayer session. I'm not yet sure if we're going to continue off the Wealth of Nations campaign that we have been doing for months and months. Um, not months and months, maybe a month or two, I don't know. Um, or if we're going to start a new campaign, but we are playing again. I'm very excited about that. It might end up taking up the 12 o'clock slot, since that's the historic location of those multiplayer sessions. But... Yeah, I don't know. I, I'm really excited to have that back. I think a lot of people have been asking about it. A lot of people have missed it. And then finally, the last thing I want to talk about for this video is um, I want you to, if you have a moment, please uh, use the link in the description of this video to go and look at this straw poll and go ahead and make, make your answer. Which game or games hold the most interest to you? Pick one or more. So you don't have to just pick one. It's not, not a one thing. You can click as many as you want. So for instance, if you like on the channel, if you're most interested in like the builder-esque type games, go ahead, check off Factorial, Banished, you know, whatever else you're interested in, RimWorld, and then and then there you go. If you're more interested in the strategy type games, click off the strategy type games. If you just want to see me play Sims, then click the Sims. I don't know whatever you want. But I'm just curious to see how this how this kind of results. And um, these are in no particular order aside from what came to mind. Obviously, these ones came to mind first because 90% of the channel is Paradox. But other than that, I'm not prioritizing them or ranking them by my desire to play them. These are all games that I enjoy. And so, yeah. Let me know what your thoughts are. And um, that's really, really all that I had to say about that for this week. But, you know, if I do go back up to 12 videos a day, what I'll probably end up doing is taking those four extra slots... And instead of just doing more of the same, I want to add in more mixture. I'd like to do like maybe one video a day of Factorio again, or maybe one video a day of, of Banished or some, some FTL, you know, like some more variety because I feel like I have a tendency to really get focused on one game and then I only play that for a while and 
you know, it's been months since I've played, say, Hearthstone, or months, actually, since I've played Factorio, and I haven't played in the space since over a year, but there, at one point there was a, a small percentage of the subscribers to the channel that were here for Endless Space, and then I never played it again, and I just feel like I want to... I don't want to be a, a bard, you know, a, a jack-of-all-trades, master of none. I want to be really good at the games that I play, but at the same time, I do want to have a, a, a tasteful mix of content that... a palatable thing, like people that can get something out of it. I don't want to lose people. And unfortunately, and I think that this is normal for YouTube channels, I'd say on average anywhere from 50 to 100 people leave the channel as subscribers every day. Every single day. 100 people are dis, dis, uh, unsubscribing. Um, and that's fine. Because every day there are like four or 500 people who are subscribing, which ends up being a net positive. But yeah, that's all I really had to say about all that. So, yeah, um, let me know what your thoughts are. This may have been a longer agenda video, but that's okay. That's totally fine. Also, I didn't mention it, but I did, um, there is another game coming up soon. It is called Stronghold Crusader 2. I'll have a code for that this weekend. So I'm pretty excited about that. That'll probably get mixed in on the weekend. So, righto, I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching, as always. Appreciate you being here. You make the channel go. And I look forward to seeing you soon.